Welcome to a cold and wet Oxfordshire in December. Yep, we're driving a yellow Civic Type R, but unfortunately we haven't managed to drag the sun out with us today, which is a shame because this limited edition Civic Type R is a very special car, albeit a little confusing. What you get over the standard Civic is some nice BBS 20 inch wheels. They're wrapped in a cut two tie rather than the Continental. Now this is where the problems start because with this cup two tire, while it's absolutely brilliant in the in the dry, in the in the heat, in the cold and wet, it's rendered just about useless due to the fewer grooves in the tire to help spread that water away. As a result, when you put your foot down, you get a lot of wheel spin, and with that, torque steer, and the diff's trying to do its best to, to level the power out. I've got traction control off, I figured that's an easier way of driving it in these wet conditions. So what do you get for your extra £5,000? Well, in truth, you get less. So we don't get this infotainment system, we don't get aircon, we lose a bit of sound deadening. In total, we lose about 46 kilos, which is all good and well, but I'm pretty sure I'll put that on over lockdown, to be honest with you. And this is where the confusion starts to set in, because while we've lost some weight and we've got a track focused tire we've got lighter bbs forged wheels we've still got those back seats so it's kind of confusing where this car lies because while it's a limited edition car and obviously geared towards going on track it's not really geared towards it that much which leaves the question of why it even exists now i'm sure some of the guys from honda would have liked a stripped out version a, a proper club sport style vibe where you get without the back seats and you get that half cage. Visually, with the limited edition, you do get this beautiful yellow paint as well, and you also get a black bonnet vent and a few other touches here and there, including the black roof instead of body covered. So that helps to differentiate it from the regular car, but in truth, there's nothing else. So the Civic Type R has never been a comfortable hot hatch, and the same can be said again for this limited edition model. While we've got the revised damper settings of the 2020 model, it's still fairly stiff in comfort compared to its rivals. It feels a little bit fidgety. It doesn't really settle all that well on long distances, but you knock it through the drive modes. We're now in sport, which is pretty much the normal mode, if you will. Things get a little bit stiffer. The throttle response gets a little bit sharper. And then on top of that, we've got R mode, which take it up to the next level again. It's not something you really want to use on the road because it gets a little bit too stiff. Sport mode is, a, is about where, they, where you want it. We've still got that lovely two litre turbocharged VTEC engine. Yes, it doesn't rev to nearly 9K like they did in the old engines, but we still have about 316 brake horsepower and about 295 pound feet of torque, which is enough for 0 to 62 in around five and a half seconds, at least 5.8 to be exact. But sadly, because of the Cup 2 tire and because we've got horrendous rain today, I can't get this power down well. In fact, we're fourth actually, we're flat. And we managed to pick up traction there just before we get down to the study by an hour, which on nice to test the brakes as well, which are the Brembo. For the 2020 models on all Civic Type R's, they got a slight upgrade on the brakes, but they were brilliant before and they're still brilliant now. There's a lovely modular feel to the brake pedal. Under braking, this thing is surreal. Just comes to a proper standstill. Really sharp front turn in. We've still got a bit of grip. The diff's trying to work its magic. Spinning quite a lot, like every Civic Type R driver. Unlike every Civic Type R driver, we're trying not to bash it off the limiter in every single gear. It's very difficult to use any of the power in the wet. If this was your only car, you could not use this in bad conditions. That being said, for seven months of the year when weather conditions aren't so dire, the grip offered by the Michelin Cup 2 tyre elevates the FK8 to another level. While the creation of this limited edition model might seem a touch on the gimmicky side, underneath it has almost entirely the same components as the regular models, and we know firsthand just how brilliant the FK8 is, standing head and shoulders above the competition. Now, if they'd gone ahead and got rid of the back seats and everything else and geared it towards the track, because this has been going around setting lap records, I could understand it, but we still have the rear seats. We're just missing some aspects. We just make it not as good as a road car as the regular FKA. But my opinion doesn't mean anything because after an hour of Honda announcing that these cars were now on sale and, and people could start their orders, they were sold with only 20 coming to the UK. While it's not the best we've seen from Honda, the limited edition, 
it's still very good. Don't let the underwhelmingness of this car put you off. Get yourself a regular FK8. Get yourself some nice 18 inch forged wheels to save weight again. Get yourself some nice sticky rubber with the change and get yourself on some track days because that's where you can properly enjoy these cars. Exploit the chassis, exploit just how brilliant of a hot hatch this is and enjoy your cars. Don't lock them up because they're limited edition. Get out there and drive it.